An important part of any audio system is the crossover. Crossover split the signal into separate frequency ranges and send those ranges to the appropriate drivers. This lets each driver work optimally within its own range, which results in better overall sound. Today, we're going to take a look at how passive crossovers work, the components that make them up, and explore some of the advantages and disadvantages of different crossover filters. A passive crossover for speakers is an essential component required for a sound system. A passive crossover allows sound to be divided up and directed to specific drivers, ensuring different ranges within the frequency spectrum can be navigated clearly and precisely according to their intended frequency range. These crossovers are passive in design, meaning they contribute no significant power amplification to the system. Instead, they allow you to maximize your existing power by controlling how it is delivered between the audio speakers. Using a passive crossover can produce balance and clarity in any audio setup, giving you the best possible listening experience. On the market today, consumers have access to a variety of types of passive crossovers, including two-way, three-way, four-way, and even higher order systems. Two-way crossovers are the most common and they split an audio signal into two parts, generally a mid-range woofer band and a tweeter band, for seamless transition between the tweeter and woofer. Now, a three-way crossover acts similarly, but includes additional separate monitored range for the low frequencies. A four-way system operates in pairs, with one setup of components focusing on providing signals for specifically tailored to the mids and low frequencies, while the other is focused on the highs. Now, whatever level of crossover you're looking at, you can rest assured that each offers varying levels of control for maximizing your audio output. Now, this leads us to what components actually make up a passive crossover. A passive crossover is an electronic device that uses inductors, capacitors, and resistors to produce a frequency-dependent attenuation of the input signal. Now, these components work together to divide an audio signal into separate frequencies that are sent to individual drivers, such as woofers and tweeters. By utilizing inductors, capacitors, and resistors to separate the frequency spectrum of an audio signal into lows, mids, and highs. When current passes through the inductor, its coil generates a magnetic field that blocks some frequencies while allowing others to pass through. Now, a capacitor, on the other hand, allows higher frequencies to pass while blocking low frequencies. And a resistor's resistance is constant across all frequencies. It diverts electrical energy away from the system in order to reduce peak power or direct more current to specific components within the system. In passive crossovers, these electrical components are arranged in circuits that separate incoming audio frequencies into discrete bands, which can be individually amplified before being sent onto a speaker driver tuned for optimal output at those levels. Now with that in mind, let's briefly talk about when you would use each of these components within a passive crossover. An inductor is a must-have component in a passive crossover network, especially in high-frequency applications. It acts as a filter for high frequencies and helps to decrease signal level at or above the chosen frequency point. By utilizing an inductor, you can send low-level audio signals to appropriate speakers so that they only play sounds within their frequency range capacities. A capacitor is typically used in a passive crossover when it is necessary to limit low frequency energy passing through the driver. This helps prevent certain frequencies from overpowering other elements in the system Promoting smooth and balanced performance, capacitors are also often used alongside inductors to create band pass or notch filters, which help alter the frequency range of certain drivers accordingly. These are both important aspects of achieving good sound quality with a passive crossover, as they help ensure that all components of the system can be heard properly rather than fighting and competing against each other. A resistor is used in passive crossovers to attenuate that level of specific frequency range, allowing the driver, like a tweeter or woofer, to not be overworked. The resistor absorbs some of the power at frequencies where it's incorporated, thus preventing the signal from reaching the driver at too high a level and outputting distortion. Ideally, these resistors are chosen carefully to best match the driver's responses, as well as other crossover components, such as capacitors and inductors. The overall stability and linearity of a passive crossover highly depends on how effectively they are chosen and precisely placed. This all brings us to briefly discuss some of the more common passive crossover filters you will come across. When it comes to a passive crossover system, there are many different types of filters that can be used. And each filter type has its own unique characteristics and advantages 
making it difficult to know which one is best for your particular application. Let's take a look at three different filters, first order, second order, and third order crossovers. First order crossover utilizes only one component, either an inductor or a capacitor to separate the signal into two frequency bands. One of the primary advantages of first order crossover is its simplicity. It requires only one component, an inductor or a capacitor, to divide that audio signal into two bands. This makes it easy and economical solution for those looking to recreate a passive crossover system. Despite its simple design, one of the drawbacks of using a first order crossover is that it provides limited control over the frequencies being filtered out. This means that some of the frequencies may not be blocked or attenuated as much as needed leading to an uneven or even unbalanced sound. Now, a second order crossover is slightly more complex than a first order. It combines two components, one inductor and one capacitor, to separate the signal. One of the major benefits of the second order crossover is its increased precision and control over the frequency bands that are filtered out. With two components in series or parallel configuration, this type of filter allows for much more accurate filtering than a single component first order design. Additionally, it provides better attenuation. One of the major drawbacks of using a second order crossover is that it introduces more phase shift than a first order design, which can lead to a distorted sound or improper frequency response with improper implementation. Additionally, this type of filter requires two components in series or parallel configuration, resulting in a higher cost. Finally, a third order crossover combines three components in series or parallel configuration to create distinct frequency bands with even greater accuracy than either first or second order designs. One of the primary advantages of a third order crossover is its increased precision over first and second order designs. This configuration may allow for lower distortion and often a lower crossover point due to its higher order of attenuation. The main con of using third order crossover is its increased complexity compared to first and second order designs as well as higher parts cost. Additionally, this level of complexity induces higher levels of both phase shift, and when it's implemented incorrectly, it can lead to uneven sound. As you can see, a passive crossover is a vital component in any speaker system. It plays an essential role in dividing up different frequencies of audio and sending them to the appropriate speakers for optimal sound reproduction. Essentially, it acts like a frequency filter that allows speakers to reproduce sounds as accurately as possible, allowing the listeners to have a balanced and natural sounding experience. Without a passive crossover, sound frequencies would conflict, creating an inconsistent and less than ideal listening experience. Hopefully this video helps you understand a passive crossover just a little bit better. If it did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to like the video. This is Toyd's DIY Audio, and I'm out.